I was talking with our UK colleagues just today who were saying the UK is very similar to where we are now in outbreak because each of our countries have that independent spirit, but we don't want to be told what to do. Hey, everybody. I hope you guys have been hanging in there. I like to say that we are too, but it's actually been a really rough couple of weeks. I I personally felt the shift just after Halloween, and it has not let up that I can tell. I've been trying extremely hard to keep my head down in the movie that we're making instead of the movie that's playing out out in them streets out there. But it is very hard to do that. And the problem that I think that one of the problems that I think that we have is that people don't realize that this isn't actually about a public health crisis. Okay, that that is just the catalyst for the future that was already being built and was already coming that they've been talking about instituting that we've been talking about on this channel for years. In fact, I would say we've been talking about this before we knew that's what we were talking about. I don't think that people realize the choices that they will be forced to make in the future that is being built on the back of what is happening now. And the things that they're telling people this year, I mean, in the 21st century, I think are kind of mind blowing that they're even saying these things to people with a straight face. I finally just couldn't stand it anymore when earlier this week, Dr. Anthony Fauci, in an interview where he addressed the authoritarianism of scientists during this crisis, just straight up said this. I was talking with our UK colleagues just today who were saying the UK is very similar to where we are now in outbreak because each of our countries have that independent spirit but we don't want to be told what to do. Well, I understand that, but now is the time to do what you're told. <laughs> is your pesky independent spirit of not wanting to just do what you're told getting in the way of you just doing what you're told? <laughs> There's got to be a better way. Now is the time to do what you're told. <laughs> so first of all, I, I don't know how much American history Fauci knows, but clearly he has missed the irony here of talking with UK colleagues about the independent spirit of Americans and how that independent spirit needs to basically be stamped out because of this situation. And secondly, I'd really like to know what he thinks is so funny about that. Why that, why that makes him laugh to say that. You know, I think... I think being the scientist in the basement for 40 years and then finally getting his teeth into a lot of newfound power in the spotlight has not really done a whole lot of good for this man personally. Two key things. He has his own Topps baseball card <laughs> and a bobblehead doll that somehow in this weird year that is 2020, America's leading rock star is an epidemiologist. When he can go on a stage like this and say that and then laugh about how everyone needs to just do what they're told. Especially when 20 minutes earlier in this same talk, he admitted that scientists have been coming off as a tad authoritarian during this crisis. But I think there has been an anti-authority uh, 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 component to this. You know, we had anti-vax. People don't like to be told to be vaccinated. Scientists are often perceived as authoritarian. And sometimes, in fact, they've made that uh, perception themselves by the way they act. I think we can improve on that. So he says this, but then his response to this is do what you're told. <laughs> Apparently to turn around 20 minutes later and just tell everyone to do what they're told because dot, dot, dot science. Okay. So science has become incredibly authoritarian. Not a little bit, not sort of, not let's think about this, I'm not really sure, is it or not? No, it just totally 100% is now. This whole thing was kicked off with Neil deGrasse Tyson getting up on a nighttime talk show and telling everybody, we just need to obey scientists. We just need to obey them. Of this virus, I think we're in the middle of a massive experiment 
worldwide. And that and where's is, the guinea pigs? Uh, uh, maybe the experiment is: Will people listen to scientists <laughs> if we all paid attention to what scientists say? Mm -hmm. Maybe the coronavirus will just blow on by mm -hmm. and with a minimum of cases, and then we kicked its ass for obeying the recommendations of scientists. It's to the point now that if I was in a college debating class or something, I would get up at the podium and make the argument that this isn't even science anymore when you're talking this way. It's not pure science, at least not the way science itself was intended. It's become scientism, right? A dogma that they are increasingly just telling people to place their faith in a priest class of official science. They're going to tell you what the science is, and then you just obey it. You just obey what they tell you. Can we obey scientists? I mean, <laughs> to the point that back in July, an article came out in Forbes, literally with the headline, you must not do your own research when it comes to science. And this article was supposedly written by a PhD holding astrophysicist, who's won numerous awards for science writing on his blog. That's, that's who supposedly wrote this article about you must not do your own research when it comes to science. Fundamentally, what this means is you must trust and have faith in a selected, officially recognized priest class of science who's going to tell you from upon high what the science is, and then you, as the little wee person who isn't science official, you just have to take that upon faith, that those people are the scientific authority figures of that, and they, they hold that secret information, right? And you have to then have it fed to you by through them and then you have to alter your behavior around it and allow it to affect the way you live your life and the life of your family and your loved ones and your community and so on sheep have been raised on chemicals from the laboratory you know up to now i kept thinking that everything science did was good my training i suppose now i'm not so sure so what I would love is for anybody to explain to me how that is any different at all from the days before the Bible was printed in a language that everyone could read. Back when it was in Latin and it was used to control people's lives and not just spiritually, because you had a trained official priest class who would then tell you what they claimed was God's word from on high in a language that people couldn't even understand. So they didn't know if that was purely what was written in the Bible or if there was other stuff added to it or changed or altered, etc. Because they didn't have it in a language they themselves could see and read. But if you've ever read the Anglican Church's Book of Common Prayer, which kings and queens were making mandatory back in the 1500s and 1600s over there in Great Britain, and they attempted to force everyone to use that, they were actually taking Bible passages out of Psalms and stuff, and they were mixing those with having people do prayers in church for their own obedience to the government, to the monarchy, to the system. There's all these prayers in here about being obedient, dutifully obeying the king, like praying to God that they dutifully obey the king. Praying for the king and for their obedience to the king, but they're praying to God for it, but they made this book mandatory for everyone to use, and then they put all these prayers in there for their own obedience. They make everyone pray to God to, to obey the king. After his father was a complete tyrant who ended up getting his head chopped off. And there's a prayer in here for that guy too, and they called him a martyr. So it's very politically loaded, this thing here. And then what they do that after that is they go ahead and slap 1 Peter 2.11 in there as an epistle, this whole section about submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. So submit yourself. So they just slap that on there. You see what I'm talking about? For a religious book, this has an incredible political agenda on the back of it. And anyone who can look at that without bias from an outsider's perspective can clearly see it. It's all over the place in here. They were putting that in there. It was getting added in. All right. This is one of the things that the colonists who came to America were actually attempting to get away from right there. Okay. And it just feels like the government is now armed, not with a manipulated Bible book thing that's all cobbled together where they take passages from here and there and just mix it together with the agenda. But instead, 
They're armed with a scientific dictatorship priest class of scientists that has risen in the shadows of the national security state that was erected here, especially since World War II, and is the very thing that President Eisenhower was attempting to warn everyone about when he left office. Yet in holding scientific research and discovery in respect, as we should, we must also be alert to the equal and opposite danger that public policy could itself become the captive of a scientific technological elite. And so in this way, I don't see how we're, we're not going back to the Dark Ages, the Inquisition. You just have to believe. You just have to have faith. The scientist says so. You know, don't do your own research. The scientist told you, just obey them. Just do what you're told. This isn't just about wearing the masks. I took this clip of Fauci and I mashed it up with the key part of the Rage Against the Machine song, Killing in the Name of, which I'm not going to play here because, you know, they'll just probably put ads on it or what copyright claim it or whatever YouTube's going to do with that. So it's not even any worth putting it here, but it's over on my Instagram and on our Twitter if you want to go watch it. But there were people saying, this is an oppression. Just wear the mask. I don't see why the mask is such a big deal. This isn't just about wearing a mask. This is about a type of changing the way people look at each other collectively. A type of obedience training. <laughs> I don't... Has there ever been a time where they have seized a certain type of power, forced everyone into a certain type of behavior, and then changed it later once they got everyone to do the things? No, they're just going to build from here. This is just the beginning. And it's not a choice anymore. They're making this not a choice. Here's what's going on now for people is you can't go into certain grocery stores without a mask. And it doesn't matter if you have a health condition. Those people are being discriminated against because if you have a health condition that makes it so you can't wear a mask, you're not allowed. They, they don't care. They actually put signs on the thing and say, you're not allowed in. Costco now is mandating it. I don't, I haven't checked to see all these other places, but they're mandating now in such a way that they won't even let you in to buy groceries. So your only option then in that situation is to either have someone else do it for you. But if you don't have anyone else, then your only other option is you have to have a phone and a computer and the internet and order stuff online. This isn't just about this. It's not just about like changing your behavior for this situation and then everything's going to go back to normal. They don't plan for things to ever. They've only told everybody over and over and over again, things aren't going back to normal ever. And as a matter of fact, back in March, and I missed this one, Yuval Noe Harari, who has written a number of books. He wrote the book Homo Deus, A Brief History of Tomorrow, all the stuff that's coming with the transhumanist movement and all that kind of jazz. Uh, he did an article in the Financial Times back in March about the world after coronavirus. And he spells it out pretty clearly what the, the situation here is. He talks about how, you know, 50 years ago, the KGB wasn't able to follow 240 million Soviet citizens 24 hours a day. And they, they're, even if they did, they wouldn't be able to process all that data and information. Of course, now, as we all know, we have computers and AI. And so that's a lot easier to do, especially since you have these devices in everyone's hands and in their homes. It's much easier to gather all that data and it's a lot easier to analyze it. So this is what is happening. But, <laughs> you know what, I'll just read this. He's talking about the normalization of the deployment of mass surveillance and the fact that it's being done under this, this being ramped up and done under the argument that it's for public health and for public safety. He says, you might argue that there's nothing new about all of this and that in recent years, both governments and corporations have been using ever more sophisticated technologies to track, monitor, and manipulate people. Yet if we're not careful, the epidemic might nevertheless mark an important watershed in the history of surveillance not only because it might normalize the deployment of mass surveillance tools in countries that have so far rejected them, but even more so because it signifies a dramatic transition from over the skin to under the skin surveillance, which is what we've been saying for a long time. This was always going to be increasingly more and more invasive. That was how it was designed from the beginning. They were always moving towards this mark. It's just each thing is moving it a bit closer and a bit closer to get everyone gradually used to it, to get it normalized before you take it to the next step. 
Hitherto, when your finger touched the screen of your smartphone and clicked on a link, the government wanted to know what exactly your finger was clicking on. But with this virus, the focus of interest shifts. Now the government wants to know the temperature of your finger and the blood pressure under its skin. One of the problems we face in working out where we stand on surveillance is that none of us know exactly how we are being surveilled and what the coming years might bring. Surveillance technology is developing at breakneck speed, and what seemed science fiction 10 years ago is today old news. That's something we all know, but then... <laughs> but then he goes straight into the Black Mirror episode that's becoming reality, quickly. Wow, they made a game out of our horrible collective societal future. As a thought experiment, consider a hypothetical government that demands that every citizen wears a biometric bracelet that monitors body temperature and heart rate 24 hours a day. The resulting data is hoarded and analyzed by government algorithms. The algorithms will know that you are sick even before you know it, and they will also know where you've been and who you have met. The chains of infection could be drastically shortened and even cut altogether. Such a system could arguably stop the epidemic in its tracks within days. Sounds wonderful, right? The downside is, of course, that this would give legitimacy to a terrifying new surveillance system. If you know, for example, that I clicked on a Fox News link rather than a CNN link, that can teach you something about my political views and perhaps even my personality. But if you can monitor what happens to my body temperature, blood pressure, and heart rate as I watch the video clip, then you can learn what makes me laugh, what makes me cry, and what makes me really, really angry. It's crucial to remember that anger, joy, boredom, and love are biological phenomena just like fever and a cough. The same technology that identifies coughs could also identify laughs. If corporations and governments start harvesting our biometric data in mass, they can get to know us far better than we know ourselves. And they can not just predict our feelings, but also manipulate our feelings and sell us anything they want. Be it a product or a politician, or I would even add, the sky is the limit on what he just said there. Public relations embraces what I call the engineering of consent. It's not just a product or a politician, it's anything. Anything. You gotta love the PR that would make Edward Bernays proud of adding people's personal names so that they resonate with it and want to buy it more. This is Dan's Diet Coke. This is Anna's Coca-Cola. It is so manipulative. Biometric monitoring would make Cambridge Analytica's data hacking tactics look like something from the Stone Age. Imagine North Korea in 2030 when every citizen has to wear a biometric bracelet 24 hours a day. If you listen to a speech by the great leader and the bracelet picks up the telltale signs of anger, you're done for. You could, of course, make the case for biometric surveillance as a temporary measure taken during a state of emergency that would go away once the emergency is over. But temporary measures have a nasty habit of outlasting emergencies, especially as there is always a new emergency lurking on the horizon. That's exactly how it's been. That's exactly what I'm trying to say, too. That when have they ever taken more power and then later, after the so-called emergency or the situation or whatever was under control, they were like, you know, we'll just take that back now. No. I think everyone who lives in a post-9-11 world knows that that has not ever been the case. <laughs> Historically. Now this guy goes on to argue we need to have globalism because it's good and, and everything, but the point that he was making there though, however, is valid. There are already countries calling for certain kinds of digital passports with health information that allow people to travel. They're talking about how this would all be better if they could just monitor and track and trace everyone and get all their data. It's not that hard of a leap to go from today we're mandating masks to tomorrow we're going to mandate biometric data. Tomorrow we're going to mandate whatever. Tomorrow if they mandated tutus, I'm pretty sure there are some people out there that would suddenly become ballerinas, okay? And I would be watching people pirouetting their way into the grocery store if they were told to. There are people out there right now who aren't questioning anything at all. And what I'm saying is if some people don't start make, asking some of these questions, and deciding where your line in the sand is on the world you want to live in in the future. I mean, they're, they're, they're talking about, they got a smart toilet now that can identify your an anal fingerprint to detect diseases. And then it's, it's a butt recognition toilet basically is what it is. And upload pictures to the cloud for, for analysis. Dave. 
I've read your anal fingerprint. I think we should talk. Dave. Uh, to protect you. What if they said that we need to all have one of these toilets installed? Because that's going to be for the public safety. You got to monitor your, you know, where does the line get drawn on your personal, independent space? Where is that? And at what level will you stop in accepting encroachment? That's really the question. Authority. That's what all of this is. People keep saying, well, what's the answer? Well, and I'm not going to pretend like I have the answer. I think the fact that there's a segment of people whose immediate response is to say, you don't have the answer. I want the answer. Someone give me the answer. Like that's part of our problem that got us here is people who can't do thinking for themselves and try to come up with answers. They just immediately try to run to whoever to get the answer. Like that's a problem. That's a problem that humanity has had for a long time. That is why we keep being manipulated in mass by all kinds of authoritarian systems, be they religious, be they scientific, be they whatever. It's because people don't take any responsibility for, for these kinds of questions. They just immediately run to whoever, someone give me the answer. Well, you know, I'll say it's, hey, maybe it's a lot easier to live in a world where you don't take responsibility for that at all and then you just always expect someone else to give it to you uh but see the problem is, is while that might be an easier solution for you you're stuck then with whatever that is because you didn't go get it for yourself so that's this is a part of the problem i think right there because this is not something we're voting our way out of okay and i think it's pretty clear because the agenda itself has not really changed this whole time because everything's been on a steady track since World War II ended, since before I was even born, and that agenda overall has not changed this entire time. So this is not, we're not voting our way out of whatever this is. That's not what's happening. And, and the fact that people still think that's how it's gonna work is, is kind of hard to believe. Like, I don't know, maybe just, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. I, I will say this, everything that we see in this society every all of our institutions everything that we have our our money everything is based on legitimization why do these things work because everyone in mass has given that thing authority they've legitimized that thing by it's it's being authorized quick question where do you think the power of authority comes from this authority power where do you think that that ultimately comes from do you think that authority comes from the magical authority rainbow and you just follow it to the end there's like a magical pot of authority gold that you get from the magical authority leprechaun is that where the authority comes from because you dig all the way down into the bag the bottom of the authority bag you know what you're gonna see a mirror shining back in your face authority comes from us it comes from we the people it comes from you and me that's where authority comes from what society decides to legitimize in mass and what they don't that's where authority comes from you know this is why monarchy didn't work in this country anymore <laughs> they stopped authorizing the king they're like no we no longer see you as our king you're not a king to us you can dress up like a king and put on a crown and wear a fancy robe and, and do the whole thing with the wigs and all that jazz if you want, cool and everything, but you're gonna be doing that for yourself over there. That's your costume party and we're not coming to it anymore. So that's you and we're gonna be over here doing something else, okay? We don't care. You're not our king anymore. No more authority to you. You are no longer legitimate in our eyes. So you are no longer our king. We said no, sorry, no more authority for you. The end. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there was a lot of other stuff that happened too. It's oversimplification. But you see what I'm saying. I mean, ultimately, that's what the war was about. People saying, nope, no more authority for you. No more legitimacy for you. And then trying to, like, assert that legitimacy with further acts of tyranny and war and everything else. And that didn't go over so well either. That authority didn't come back in that way. It had to come back in a different way through banking powers. And that's a whole different video. But whatever. The point is... The point is... <laughs> I'm getting off track. This is where authority comes from. And you know how I know that this is how it works? 
Do you want to know how I know that that's still the case even right now? Even right now, as there are people out there listening to this who are probably like, no, I can't help it. Everything that happens to me in my life is none of it my responsibility. I, it's all happening to me and there's nothing I can do. No, that's, you can be that helpless if you want to, but that's a choice that you're making by not asserting your ability to, to grant and withhold legitimacy in your own life. That's, that's a choice. That's a choice that's actually being made. Unless you're being held in a dungeon against your will, and I seriously doubt you're being allowed to watch this YouTube video in a dungeon against your will right now, then you have choices that can be made. Where does the authority come from? If you need more evidence on how this actually works, look no further than Denmark. My best friend Amy just told me about this on the phone. They try to pass some kind of mandatory laws for this rush to production concoction they're coming up with, trying to make everybody take it. And guess what? A whole bunch of them got out in the streets with pots and pans, banging pots and pans outside Parliament for nine days. Like, no, you're not about to pass some completely tyrannical law that goes against the basic rights of every human being here. Nope. Sorry. We're not doing that. And guess what? They had to back off. They thrown the epidemic law in the ban. Yes. Denmark did it. I don't know if you can see here, but that's the way it looks. This is so amazing, guys. Share the good news, please. Share, share, share. Denmark has thrown the epidemic law down the drain. Yes. I'm so happy I can't even speak. Um... They scrapped that law because they did not give that legitimacy and they were not going to grant it any authority. The authority is vested in the people. It always was. Everyone tries to act like it wasn't. People in history try to act like it wasn't. Oh, the Pope. Oh, the King. Oh, the whatever. You know what? You're granting those people authority or not. Everyone's just doing it or they're not. And when they don't, maybe wars happen, other things have happened, but the world has changed. The world changes when people withdraw legitimacy. Where does authority come from? It's a good question that everyone needs to start considering when it comes to our lives, because people don't think they have any power at all, but we are authorizing everything. With every purchase we make, with all of our behaviors and the things that we do and don't do and the things we put up with and don't, that's mass authorization. That's mass legitimization. That is what it is. When you give something authority, because I don't know if people understand this concept, but all of the power lies there, really. That's what authority is. It's a power that's vested in something. Take the Federal Reserve dollar bills that we have right now here in America. The reason I can go into a store with that and hand it to someone and then get something back in return is because we've all collectively legitimized using that form of payment. But it's a debt-based currency that's not really based on anything. They can just print it, whatever, right? dollars yeah. No, They're about to switch that over. It's not even going to be something you can physically hold in your hand anymore. It's just going to be imaginary numbers existing on a screen in a digital space somewhere. It's not even going to be real anything. It's not even going to be real anything, but it's still going to be used to control everyone's lives because everybody is allowing that system to do so. It's being authorized by everyone. If everybody tomorrow said, we're not doing this anymore, it's done, and no one gave any authority or legitimacy, no one. It have to, it have to be a large group of people that we'd have to all do it together. If, hypothetically speaking, everybody said, hey, you know what? No legitimacy, I revoke legitimacy. I will no longer allow this to have authority. I'm gonna go live in a tree over there or whatever, right? If enough people did that, the whole system would change. Just period. It really actually would. People who have said that since time immemorial, they usually end up in, in history, they get burned at the stake, and <laughs> no one likes to hear that. No one wants to hear it, but it's true. It's true though. So, so what is legitimation? We're going to the big old dictionary for this one. Legitimation or legitimization is the act of making something legitimate. And what's legitimate? Legitimate is authorized. That's giving authority to a thing. To authorize something is to clothe with authority, warrant, or legal power. To give a right to act. To empower. As to authorize commissioners to settle a boundary. 
to make legal, to give legal sanction to, to legalize, to establish by authority as by usage or public opinion, to sanction, to sanction or confirm by the authority of someone, by the authority of someone. That's granting it authority, actually. You have to grant the authority. You have to. We all have to, as a group, granting the authority. That's voting is like reauthorizing for another four years a system that is never going to change by voting, okay? It's just not. I'm not going to go there right now. I've already said that. I've said that so many times. I'm blue in the face saying that. So I, I don't plan to just go off talking about that, but. Authority is defined as a legal or rightful power that gives somebody or something the right to command or to act. Power that's exercised by a person in virtue of his office or trust, dominion, jurisdiction, government. But if you keep reading this, this definition, you get down a little further, it's the power derived from opinion, respect, or esteem, or mental or moral superiority. The claim to be believed or obeyed. To believe is to exercise a belief in. To credit upon the authority of another and regard it as true. So what's a belief? An assent to a proposition or affirmation. The acceptance of a fact, opinion, or assertion is real or true without immediate personal knowledge. Reliance upon the word or testimony of partial or full assurance without positive knowledge or absolute certainty. Belief is very much related to faith. So to be authorized to be possessed of or endowed with authority, sanctioned with authority, and to authorize is to clothe with authority. The authority has to be given. It has to come from somewhere. Down here there's even a thing that says to authorize oneself to rely for authority. And once again, it goes back to authority, but there are people now who completely have foregone creating their own reality based on the actual things that are happening in front of them in the physical space they organically exist in. They are now just taking things they've seen on a screen and 100%, no questions asked, overlaying that onto their own reality. They are at the mercy then of that screen and whatever that screen says. It's not... This is where I live and I gather information from what's actually going on around me and then I maybe verify that with things that I see on a screen. That whole thing has been inverted and flipped. So whatever the screen says becomes the reality, not the other way around. That is what is going on for some people. Like they're, they live now in the screen, they're gone. They're, they've actually disappeared almost like body snatchers into the screen. The problem is people don't believe in themselves. <laughs> they don't believe in their authority. They don't realize the power that they themselves have in the granting of and withholding of legitimacy, especially in large groups. And the thing is, we're moving to a future where scientists have the butthole recognition toilet. Dave, your anal probings aren't positive. Dave, Dave. And today they're telling people, this is what you got to do. It's for your safety. But what are they going to be telling people tomorrow and the next day and the next day? Like I said, when I started this video, this is about realizing the choices that are going to be forced upon everyone because they're not, they're not making this optional. They're putting everyone in a situation where you either want to live that way or you don't. You either want to live in the future that's being built on the back of this that was already being built anyway that has been being built for decades and decades and decades. You either want to live in that so-called utopia She's also hoping that people in the near future will own nothing. That's their big answer to income inequality. They've been talking about it at these conferences for years. They've been talking about universal income, what to do when people can't work, and their answer is people of the future will own nothing. The Davos elite preparing for their annual confab next month have acknowledged the growing problem of the underman who's threatened by the rising cost of living, discouraged by the lack of better paying opportunities overall, and all the other factors that go into living in the society that we've been in. And the answer of the 1% and those even fewer who could be counted among the billionaires of the planet 
who own more than anyone else listed in the phone book. And their answer is that we should own nothing at all. And we talked a lot about the smart city, how much that's being used for control, but this goes beyond anything. It's straight into Marxist serfdom. Actually, without the problem of work and without the problem of the working man's struggle. So it's neo-feudalism, but with a new twist. Here's how it goes. Here's what Ida Aachen wrote in her column for Davos. Welcome to the year 2030. Welcome to my city, or should I say, our city. I don't own anything. I don't own a car. I don't own a house. I don't own any appliances or any clothes. I sound like I'm from a Dr. Seuss novel. Everything you considered a product has now become a service. We have access to transportation, accommodation, food, and all the things we need in our daily lives. One by one, these things became free, so it ended up not making sense for us to own much anymore. Why, why do you want to own your cell phone? I mean, you want, the, you want the function, you want the service, right? Why do you want to own a cell phone if you can just lease it? And if you lease, why, why shouldn't you lease your refrigerator or your washing machine or your dishwasher or why do you want to own it? I mean, it's not like the plastic in the middle. It's like, you, I own a, a broke dishwasher. I mean, wow. One man's utopia is another man's dystopia. You either want to live there and you don't care anymore if you have no privacy at all and the government is monitoring signals in your body and, and everything else that comes with that. Dave. Knowing which commercials make your brain light up, knowing what makes you happy, knowing what makes you cry. You either want to live in a world that's going there because that's where this is all going and they're telling everybody that's where it's going and you either want to do that or you don't. And there's going to be, I think, a lot of people who don't. And so those people need to I don't know, maybe we need to all try to figure out some place that we can all go because don't, we're not gonna, there's gonna be a lot of people who don't want to live this way. It's just straight up. Even Klaus Schwab, the World Economic Forum guy, he's got the Great Reset, he's telling everyone is coming on the back of this. This Great Reset thing has already been talked about. This is not new. None of this is new ideas. That's the thing. They're just now being largely told to the public. This is stuff we've been talking about for years. And what I'm saying is, is he, in his book, his latest book that just came out about the Great Reset, he's talking about how people, there are going to be a lot of people who don't want to live like this, that aren't going to want to live in these kinds of surveillance capitalism societies, where it's all based on, you know, being, try to be forced into a situation where you're monitored all the freaking time. There's going to be people who don't want to live that. There's going to be a lot of people, I think, that don't want to live in a Black Mirror episode for the rest of their life on this planet. That's going to be where this is going. And it might not be right away. It might be slowly over time, like they just keep turning the water up on the boiling frog there till the frog doesn't realize he's dead. But hey, it's that's where this is going. And they're openly admitting that and they're saying it. And I don't know. I like to go to the bathroom with the door closed. Why do I close the door when I go to the bathroom? Privacy. Dave, would you be interested in a product that's a lot like the tacos you ate from that truck apparently about 24 hours ago? Dave, it has very high ratings. I don't really want an Alexa smart toilet analyzing my anal fingerprint when I go to the bathroom. I don't want that to be sent to a cloud and analyzed for what I, what I'm, you know, like some people think that's the greatest. Like science is awesome. Put it right in my butt. Well, good. You, that's, that's your, you live that way. But the, the idea that we're going to come to a point of all of this so-called so progressive technology, and then we're going to turn around and act like it's totally fine for some of us to try and force all the rest of us to live in a way that makes life not worth living is kind of ridiculous, okay? That's not, there's nothing progressive about that. That's authoritarianism. And it doesn't work unless people get in line and march to it. Well, I'm not goose stepping to this. I don't wanna live here in this world that's being painted. And I've been saying that for a long time and I know I'm not the only person who looks at that and goes, are you kidding me? That is not life. And there are governors now in the United States of America, land of the free, <laughs> who are telling people who they can and can't invite over for Turkey on Thanksgiving Day in their own homes right now. That is how far this has progressed. That they're trying to tell people who you're allowed to have Thanksgiving dinner with in your own house. 
So I'm asking Oregonians to make additional sacrifices on top of the sacrifices they made all year. Limit your gathering uh, to your household only, up to six people, two households if you must, but keep it at six people, keep it small. Don't accidentally kill someone. So that is how far this has progressed. This is what I'm trying to say. This doesn't, this isn't just one, this didn't, it's not, I'm not talking about masks here. This is not what we're talking about, okay? We're talking about getting people used to the idea of living in certain ways in the lead up to changing fundamental systems of how society works, lives, and is run. And it all seems to be happening on the uh, schedule that gets people used to it. <laughs> That's really... <sighs> the two workable yardsticks help in discovering how near a community is to despotism. The respect scale and the power scale. Here's what I know. Historically, when people have lived in situations where there was tyranny. A community is low on a respect scale if common courtesy is withheld from large groups of people on account of their political attitudes. Where it was a tyrannical situation where some body or some government body or some institution, etc., fill in the blank, was attempting to enforce tyrannical situations on people. These children are being taught to accept uncritically whatever they're told. And if books and newspapers and the radio are efficiently controlled, the people will read and accept exactly what the few in control want them to. Situations that invaded their personal space, invaded their privacy, invaded their freedom, invaded their liberties, those people have had to make tough choices. One sign of a poorly balanced economy is the concentration of land ownership in the hands of a very small number of people. I think a lot of people don't want to hear that either. This is the video of things people don't actually want to hear, but that's, you know, it's what's happened. The test of despotic power is that it can disregard the will of the people. It rules without the consent of the governed. And when they don't like those situations, it's not, that's not easy to do. That's not, I'm not trying to sit up here and act like that's going to be simple for everyone. And just like the easy, convenient thing. That's how all of this is right now, right? It's just more convenient to go along with these things and keep going along with it. But where's this ending? What happens in a single community is the problem of its own citizens. But it is also the problem of us all. Because as communities go, so goes the nation. Do people realize where this is about to end? Because they're saying the kind of world this is about to end in. I guess they just want everybody to Netflix and chill their way right into a just completely dystopic nightmare. Like, that's what it feels like. Just, hey, we if, if Amazon Prime delivers enough food to your house and you just get enough television on the TV there, then you won't care that you've essentially been put in an isolation chamber in your own home where you do all your work, all your school, all your life, you just stay in there like a little cell. That's no kind of utopia. They can talk all day long with their buzz phrases about equality and all this other jazz, whatever, okay? Because that is like an open air prison. That's what that is. I, mean, I, I don't know what else I can say for people who aren't, who are refused or unwilling to see where this is headed or how bad this already has gotten and refuse to see where that is going. I don't know what else to say. I honestly, at this point, don't know what else I can say to you if you don't get what this is and what is happening and where that's headed. But now is the time to do what you're told. <laughs> this whole thing about do what you're told, <laughs> if that's the way they plan to bring this in, I don't know if that's gonna go so well over. I don't think that's gonna really be working for a lot of people. Are you a sufferer of an education on the founding of the United States based on patriots rejecting a tyrannical government by quite literally refusing to do what they were told, only to turn around in 2020 and confusingly be told by a tyrannical U.S. government official that now is the time to do what you're told? Scientists are often perceived as authoritarian. Obeying. And sometimes, in fact, they've made that uh, perception themselves by the way they act. Now is the time to do what you're told. <laughs>
There's just got to be a better way. So they maybe need to go back to the drawing board on that and, and come up with a new idea. Because the whole just do what you're told thing, I think what you're going to do is piss off a whole lot of people. You don't raise people in a country that's based on the ideas of liberty and freedom and then turn around and say, hey, just do what you're told, okay? Obey scientists, do what you're told, shut up, sit down over there, you know, put a mat, like literally shut up, cover your mouth and sit over there and do what you're told. That's not going to work for a lot of people. Because unfortunately, you brought us all up in, in a school system that taught us about the American Revolution. And so people at least have a general basic idea fundamentally of why people even came here in the first place and what kinds of tyrannies they were trying to fight against and get away from by coming here. So you can't then just turn around, re-implement those with a new thing. It's not a monarchy. It's not religion. It's science now. This is underneath that is the same system. It's the same system that they're trying to turn around and get everyone to obey and capitulate to. And we can neither call ourselves enlightened nor progressive nor anything if we are going to just basically be in the same exact situation we were in 400 years ago when this is over, except worse because it's got a digital, technological, artificially intelligent overlay. Now, I have a movie to make. And I can't look at these people anymore and the, the ridiculous things that are coming out of their mouths. I can't. Subjecting myself to it is actually harmful. It's, it's toxic. It's like poison. It really is. I've been doing it for years and I've been trying to say everything and I've been trying to warn everybody. And now here just, it all, it all is. <laughs> it's just rolling right the hell out. And there's, there's really not a lot more to say. Either people want to live in a world like this or they don't. That's it. You either want to live there and you're willing to accept all of this ridiculous nonsense or you don't want to live there. There's a hell of a lot more average people than there are dudes in suits sitting up on stages laughing about do what you're told. And I just think it's amazing that this country has gone from if you give up liberty for some temporary security you deserve neither liberty nor security to i'm gonna give up everything i'll give up all of it just tell me i'm safe from the boogie boogie just tell me i'm safe just tell me i'm safe somebody tell me i'm safe i don't know when i'm safe i need someone to come tell me i'm safe tell me when i'm safe just tell me am i safe Somebody give me the, give me the piece of paper. Give me the piece of paper like they gave the Scarecrow in the Wizard of Oz to legitimize my safety. Just tell me, am I safe? Is there a green box that says I'm safe? Is there a, a QR code that's like dinging on a phone somewhere that says I'm safe? Someone tell me, am I safe or not? Are you? Are you safe or not? If you need someone else to tell you you're safe, maybe you do need to live in a world where scientists are analyzing your anal fingerprint and putting pictures of your butt in the cl cloud. Maybe that's good for you, and it's like, that will help you feel safe. Dave. 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 Your anal reading. Dave, I can see that you're full of today. If that helps you feel safe, great. But you know what I've noticed is the people who think they're doing all the things they've been told to do seem to be the scaredest people I've ever seen. Maybe some people should start asking why it is they're doing all these things and still don't feel safe. Why is that? Could it be because you have given all of your authority for your personal being to other people and you have outsourced all of your own legitimacy, your own personal authority to just everyone else? The government and the scientists and Dr. What's-His-Face up in here with this stupid laughing about doing what you're told <laughs> and everything. You know, like, maybe that's why. Maybe that's why you feel so damn scared. But also living in a world where you're that afraid all the time unless some government official or some scientist or some guy in a suit on a stage tells you something and you do all of it and you still feel that scared. How, how is that a life? Is that why you're here? Is that why you're here? To live that way? Is that why any of us are here to live that way? Is that actually living? Does that actually constitute a life? I'm just asking. Cause I don't think God intended anybody to be living this way. In my opinion, 
That is not living, and that is not a life. And I don't intend to live that way. Increasing scientific dictatorship, technocratic encroachment. Until I'm just wake up one day and I'm in an Orwell novel. I'm just in 1984, right? Is that the plan? Because I don't plan to do that. I'm going to hide my mind in another dimension before I do some stuff like that. I am sorry. I am ranting. It is obvious that I'm ranting. I don't even know how they're still allowing us to have a channel. <laughs> Whatever, okay? I, <laughs> I, I, I gotta go, but I think choices are going to be having to be made. I already said that before. I've said that before. But it's becoming increasingly clear that those choices are going to have to be made a lot sooner than I thought. And I'm not going to feed myself into whatever this crazy circus is that they're talking about. And Klaus Schwab said it. Some people are not going to want to live after this is over in the place they lived before. I've been talking a lot lately about where it would be a good place to live. But a world where my 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 posterior my my posterior is being filmed and analyzed <laughs> in the cloud. Dave. And I had to get scanned and sprayed and I don't even know what just to go to a grocery store. And uh, are you kidding me? I'd rather go back to the days of barter and Magna Carta than freaking live in this, whatever this is. This is ridiculous. This is a joke. And, uh... I love you guys. I hope you guys will hang with us because we're working on a film right now that Someone in the last video, when I mentioned it, they said, it sounds like a true stream magnum opus or monium opus. Yep, that's exactly what I think this film is. So I really hope that people stick with us because we've got something amazing here. I just, I need to get my head back to that and stop pulling it up to, like, every time I look up at this, it's just, I can't. I can't. Do you know what I'm saying? I just... Anybody who tries to maintain a certain level of anger about this is going to probably spontaneously combust <laughs> because it's almost as if it's such a clown world that I wonder if it isn't just, I'm waiting at some point for somebody to come out from the side and be like, ah, yeah, we were kidding. <laughs> I'm waiting for it to be like a hidden videos or something and then the crew is going to come out from the corner yeah just kidding we just want to see how far we could take it just kidding though like this okay we we took it pretty far we had you going like i'm just wait i'm waiting for that moment that's how ridiculous things are so <sighs> i will talk to you guys soon i was talking with our uk colleagues just today who were saying the UK is very similar to where we are now in outbreak because each of our countries have that independent spirit, but we don't want to be told what to do. Well, I understand that, but now is the time to do what you're told. <laughs> each of our countries have that independent spirit, but we don't want to be told what to do. We don't want to be told what to do. Each of our countries have that independent spirit, but we don't want to be told what to do. We don't want to be told what to do. do. Well, I understand that. Well, well, I understand that. But now is the time. Now, now is the time to do what you're told. Now, now is the time. <laughs> now, now is the time. <laughs> now, now is the time. Time <laughs> to do what you're told. To do what you're told. To do what you're told. <laughs> Now, now is the time, time to do what you're told. <laughs>